Welcome to In Touch, Think STEAM Career Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Ayo Olufade, PhD. This podcast explores the evolving world of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics in underrepresented community, including the Blacks, Indigenous, and people of color. STEAM is vital to our community because our community's health, economy, and future depends on our solid foundation and participation in the innovation taking place in the STEAM field. As the STEAM field continues to evolve, this podcast will attempt to connect with men and women who are champion of and in, in STEAM education let me repeat that. As the STEAM field continues to evolve, this podcast will attempt to connect with men and women who are champion of and in STEAM education and careers to gain insight into how the BIPOC community can be part of STEAM innovation and how to inspire and support the creation of innovative solution for sustainable development that will contribute to a positive change in the BIPOC community and improve the quality of life involves our participation. With the surge in emphasis in preparing K through 12 students, for STEAM workforce, initiatives devoted to exposing teachers and students to STEAM application have also increased. From targeted teacher professional development to totally reinventing teachers' preparation program, this effort have helped to identify, develop, and deliver integrated STEAM education program However, the question of how to integrate STEAM programs are best implemented on how it is best or how it could be best implemented in K-12 classrooms still remain ill-defined. For that reason, today I am privileged and honored and delighted to be talking with Dr. Colin Kelly, PhD, is the creator and the founder of Kids Chemical Solution at Kids Chemical Solution. She uses comic book to promote an imaginative and creative way of integrating chemistry. Um, and that actually sounds a real as a good foundation of making chemistry easy for students, especially in the minority community, um, to have a good understanding. Dr. Kelly, thank you for coming on to uh, Think STEM Career Podcast to discuss your comic book, your creative way of making chemistry easy for students, especially in the minority community, to understand. Thank you. Uh, do you do I have did I miss anything about your bio? I know you're also a professor at the uh, University of Arizona. Uh, do you want to add anything more? Dr. Well, I think a component that's important to our conversation, Io, and please call me Colleen. Okay. No is problem. is that my uh, family is African American by marriage. Oh, nice. so I'm raising an African American son. Um, and I met my husband when we were a uh, scientist at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. And I realized um, he was the only person of color in the entire institute <laughs> wow. at the time. <laughs> and um, so my devotion to reaching underrepresented students is a devotion to my family. Um, and that's not easily apparent when, you're, when your skin is not uh, that, the same color as the rest of your family. So um, I wanted to bring that forward because it is really important, I think, to audience to understand 
my personal connection to making sure that the BIPOC community has access to STEM education. Thank you so much for that context. And I didn't know that about you, but thank you so much. Uh, it is very important uh, for Americans, uh, for us to know that we are really diverse. And um, as you can see, and I love your passion, not only because of your family, but you're giving back to try to uplift. Somebody recently told me that our job is to lift other up. And I see yes. that that is what you're doing through using creative ways. And, and I truly appreciate that. Um, I, I love anything. I love learning a uh, framework that heightens children's intellectual ability, um, which serves literally as the foundation for continuous career growth and being informed community members. You have found uh, a fun and a fantastic way of making chemistry easy, true storytelling and comic. So to show, to share with others, this is what I found this video on YouTube and I wanted to <laughs> share with, and I love, uh, you know, your storyline and, and the message in this video. So if you bear with me for a moment, I <laughs> will share this video. Listen, I have to get this to you straight. 80% of underrepresented students are failing college chemistry, thwarting them from a career in science, engineering, and medicine, and costing them millions of dollars to make them. This has got to stop. How can we solve this problem? Our research at Kids Chemical Solutions has shown that learning chemistry is more like learning music than math, and we can get kids started at age 8 plus in learning chemistry. How do we do this? Created this series of chemistry comic books, Chapter of the Book, and Let's get these chemistry kids started early because they have a career. Thank you so much for your Excellent. Uh, don't know if. Uh... That came out clear or not? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought that that would be a good way to start. As a so that people see uh, your passion, your commitment uh, to what you're doing, and how you are trying to make it much easy for students of color, uh, an underrepresented community, trying to bring right. them up. Uh, because as you and I know, our representation is very low in the STEM or in the STEM field. And even the representation of girls is extremely low. So now we are all thinking about ways in which we can, you know, bring or increase the numbers of underrepresented communities in the STEAM field. And you are doing a great, a phenomenal job. Do you want to talk a little bit, add more to that video before I ask uh, some follow-up questions? <laughs> Yeah, I think I when I first um, was looking at this data, I thought this can't be right. 80% of, of underrepresented students failing college chemistry after two years. Mm -hmm. But that's a 2022 number. Um, and it's plus or minus 10%, but it's still staggering. And what I know from higher education is we're really trying hard. Everybody is really, really trying hard. Um, people are very concerned about those numbers. There's um, programs uh, all over campuses nationwide trying to lift up those numbers. But th what I discovered is they're not no amount of funding, no amount of resources is changing those numbers. Hmm. So I wanted to know why what we're doing is not working, <laughs> not to continue doing the same thing out of a, a goodness of our hearts. Yeah. And so I, I just want to just preview that with everybody is really trying. I don't know anybody who's not trying hard to solve this problem. But we have to change how we think because what we're doing, we cannot continue to add resources and tutoring and extra help to underrepresented students in college. We have to um, start them at age eight, nine, or 10. Um, so imagine if you wanted to uh, major in music in college. Um, most musicians of, of any color start at a very young age. They might start in, uh, third, fourth, or fifth grade. 
Um, and that's because music is a, a language based on symbols. So musicians, when they look at a sheet of music, they literally can read it and hear it. Well, chemistry is the same way. So chemistry looks like a sheet of music to a lot of people, especially organic chemistry that's symbolic. And so when you and I look at um, an organic chemistry synthesis, molecules that are being synthesized, we see motion, we see electrons being transferred, we see what we call a mechanism. The molecules literally are dancing on the page for our eyes, um, but that's training. So if we can train our youngsters of any age, uh, probably eight and up, to start to recognize symbols, just like they would with music, they're going to be able to be successful in college. So again, we would not send um, someone to college to be a music major without ever having read music. But yet what we're doing is we're sending students to become pre-med or um, an engineer. And we haven't they're not fluent in the chemical the language of chemical symbols. So they need to be fluent by the time to get to college or they're not going to be able to catch up enough. So I, I really think it's important that my strategy is understood from why I know that the brain has a plasticity and the ability to understand symbols because we've seen that with music education and we've also seen it with foreign language education. Well done, and that actually, if I, if you don't mind, I would like to share mm -hmm. a video uh, just to reinforce what you are sharing right there. Sure. <laughs> I love this. Uh, so here is this uh, video right here. Uh, oh. oh no, really? Look, look out, it's so tragic, Brittany. I can't believe it, not starry night. I just heard news that the colors in Van Gogh's star and that are fading away. The entire painting could vanish. So, so, so tragic. <laughs> but luckily, they're having a rock concert to raise awareness of the vanishing Van Gogh. So, they can fix the painting? Restore the colors? No, it's just so we can be aware of the tragedy. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I figured out how to fix the painting. All right, heavy metal, hold up your charges so we can see them. That includes you, Red Rusty. We're just gonna go for it. We'll see what happens. Stay mad at me, how's it doing this lap? We got a jam. Get up. Get up. me. How about we go club and play it out? Skip it for a duet. Just here for I don't perform in a line at the stomach. You may have heard of one, two, three, eight and double times. And the three star. We should turn you up so that we can get this grand going. So we get getting some sunglasses. Go on, let's go. Swimming with the blue sky. And we can have to go on. How about cadmium? I'm gonna go to the outside the telescope first. Oh, really? I gotta play it to them, guys. Whatever. We got the stars. I find that video really illuminating. Uh, I find that video very interesting. And I also find it interesting because this is a concept that we teach uh, high school students, right? <laughs> Literally, I'm right. a college student. But you're making it so easy, so digestible for uh, students at a lower level. Uh, th that is really that is really amazing. That is that's a uh, thinking outside the box. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely um, 
I have a, a quite an imagination, yes, <laughs> which do. is serving me on this project. <laughs> yes, you do, uh, uh, because uh, in this video, I I see the three things that I see. For example, the use of the periodic table, the mentioning of you know heavy metals, uh, making prediction about especially ionic compounds. Um, you know that is a major. Uh, are kids able, you know, in your experience uh, at a lower level, able to conceptualize that and really have a good understanding and good grasp uh, of, of this concept? How easy is it for them? I mean, I am comment. surprised, actually. I, I just finished a 10 week study with fourth grade students yeah. um, where I they're able to really easily put together cations and anions and create ionic compounds, even with polyatomics. Wow. Um, so the polyatomics usually is a stumbling block for high school students and college students. Um, but if if they're if a, a polyatomic like a carbonate is a character in the comic book, and so they just grab carbonate and put, you know, carbonate minus two with lead plus two and realize that lead carbonate or lead two carbonate is the, the correct combination. And they can write the formula, they can write the names. So it happens very quickly. I, I think we have um, overcomplicated to the point of making it um, inaccessible or kind of, um, anyway, we're creating this kind of like exclusive club yeah. by complicating it. And if we wanna be inclusive, there's ways to do it. And it's still robust, it's still correct. Um, I have all my students write correct names and formulas. I'm a stickler for, you know, accuracy. But at the same time, I've just made it simpler to understand. It's uh, cool. This storytelling uh, using Comic Way be the way for all the life science and physical science teachers to use in making learning much easier. Should this be the way of the future? Uh, what do you think? Well, I, I think it is for those sciences that are based on symbols. Okay. For example, it may not be necessary for biology because the students can see parts of a cell. There's enough. Uh, so I call bi biology a visible science. A lot of biology, especially in K through 12, you can see. Um, even if you, um, a lot of schools still have microscopes. So they children can look at things under uh, a slide under a microscope and see different natural phenomena. Mm -hmm. Chemistry is invisible. Yeah. So because chemistry is invisible, we need to invoke your imagination. Yeah. And when your imagination needs to be invoked, we need to have analogies and stories and things like and, this. And models. So it re <laughs> this is yeah, models. Right. Yeah. So I think for anything that is based on symbols, physics would fall into this category um, for some of it. Now, Newtonian physics, we know we can also see, um, and that's really tactile and hands-on, um, but other kinds of physics, you know, when you go into the realm of quantum mechanics and things like that, uh, they may want to consider using storytelling as well. So it really just depends on the STEM discipline okay. um, of what you want to show. Mm -hmm. Calculus would be another good one for a comic book because Calculus, you know, you uh, you're you're looking at like um, generating maybe a cone shape or a spherical shape, um, and where does that come from? And that would be a good story to evolve. Excellent. Uh, can can anyone? Uh, I have a follow up question. Can anyone? I mean, the way you're explaining it to me, I mean, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. Your strategy, you know, for me, I'm thinking will make chemistry, learning chemistry, very easy. So yes. I mean, am I correct? Can anyone learn chemistry by utilizing your strategy? Most especially parents. Parents, <laughs> parents and teachers. Um, I, I think what I, I, I would only urge is that people have an open mind and are willing to be a beginner again. Um, I am a first generation college student as well. Um, I don't come from a, a college educated family. And 
So I think, okay, well, you know, my mother worked in a nursing home. My dad sold insurance. If I could give my comic books to them, could they learn chemistry? And the answer is yes. But you have to be willing to. Um, I've, I, even when I was sending the comic books out to publishers, a lot of them were saying, oh, no, I don't want to, you know, people just don't want to. Wow. And and wow. and they're, they're thwarting themselves from a knowledge and an understanding of a beautiful majestic mystical incredible world of molecules and to to just say you don't want to is really it just makes me so sad so i feel like um to be good global citizens we should all try <laughs> and pick up a comic book and co-read it with your child or if you're a teacher um, look at the, all the materials I have, activity workbooks that are beefy and 50 pages with games and puzzles and models. And I've got um, other games that are separate. I've got a reading guide. And so if you wanted to, you could learn right alongside your students. You would only need to be a day ahead. So I'm not really, it's not a big ask. But what the ask is, is the beginner mindset, the the willingness to say, you know what? I shied away from this. I was, um, whatever reason, scared of it, or I didn't understand it for whatever reason. And to say, this is something I, I would like in my life. This would be an understanding I, I would like. And then I would say, everyone can do it. You know, one of the things that I also wanted to emphasize or talk about is the importance of, uh, of arts. Because what you're doing is, you're integrating art into STEM and making it Correct. STEM. Uh, that is so important. I think uh, that is, we often take it for granted, really. Uh, let me tell you a story. You know, um, when I first started a long, long time ago, uh, so we, and I, you know, went to school in Nigeria, secondary school. So in secondary school, we're given a choice of whether we want to go, uh, you know, uh, art track, or we want to go science track. And mm -hmm. I chose the science track. Whenever I think about art, I always think about painting, I always think about drawing and molding stuff, and sort of, it's all interesting, but I, I did it at any rate. So fast forward many years later, I became a teacher. I found out how it's so useful uh, just this idea of being able to draw as a as a physical science teacher and even a life science teacher, I find myself in order to draw a model, I have to. I mean, I mean, in order, to, in order to explain a concept, I have to use models, and my model is literally drawing. So I mean, seeing people like you using comic book as a way of integrating arts to make or learning the concept of science, you know, right? Uh, technology, I mean, not, not, not engineering, much, mm -hmm. much clearer and mathematics uh, is really uh, motivating and inspirational. Um, I, I wanted to share that. Another person that I find that is do that has done well. I want to say something that you've become my second hero, literally. <laughs> I, I do that. I, I'm not kidding. Um, I also had another hero that is doing that did something so similar to what you used there. Uh, this man is Dr. Clifford Johnson. Um, he is um, a science advisor uh, for Marvel and a physics professor at the University of California. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you watched the latest movie, Toro, but in that movie, uh, yeah. I, I, I guess people trying to understand why his hammer is so, or whatever that he was wielding, the tool that he was wielding was right. so powerful. So <laughs> I guess he tried to explain it that the concept was actually based on or what gives the hammer a lot of power was this idea of combining uh, the black hole, the energy that, that right. is from the black hole and uh, making things so 
you know, um, using models like that uh, for both of you, I think is so inspirational. And I feel like many teachers can benefit by watching you, by seeing what you're doing. That way, we, as you've said, not to continue to do the same thing over and over and over. The thing right. that has not been working for how many years? For <laughs> over four, four decades now, right? Right. So, and the, with the recent, uh, you know, result that the data that we got from uh, NEP, right? Uh, we mm -hmm. noticed that our students, especially in, in the secondary school, actually fifth grade and eighth grade, the performance has actually dipped, not only in in uh, in mathematics, but it's also in English. But your way, I think, will be a really interesting way to make it more fun, uh, to make it much easier to conceptualize in the minds of the young, and it also starting them pretty early. So with that right. said, with that said, what recommendation will you give teachers? Uh, because you're right, we cannot continue to do the same thing that we have been doing. Uh, and even though we say STEM education, we also know that we have the tendency of staying isolated, right? Staying in our silo. So is there things that teachers can be doing uh, to make it much interesting, utilize them, without you giving up, up your uh, proprietary secrets. Is there <laughs> things that, uh, how can teachers uh, in, in sciences uh, make their discipline easy to learn? Any recommendation? Um, well, I have a couple recommendations. I've worked really, really hard at this for years, and I would love for teachers to try to um, to use my comic books and related curriculum. I've I've created a teacher's guide. There's videos. So um, and then I use them myself in a fourth grade classroom for the last ten weeks to try it out myself. And then with another teacher who was also there, who is not a science teacher. Uh, well, he's an elementary school teacher, but not trained as a chemist. And um, he also used those. So I've seen it done firsthand. I'm here to support them. I've got so much material to help them. So um, my suggestion would be really to give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Um, I laughed so hard. The kids just loved it. Um, one thing that I noticed, Ayo, when you're talking about STEAM and reading, is the kids love to read in pairs. The school I was teaching at didn't have a budget to buy a comic book for each student. so. Uh, we bought a classroom set, so oh, they are the the, the books are not consumable. So you can buy a classroom set and have them for years to come. Um, and they read in pairs, and they each picked a character. And I just saw them hovered over the books um, so that their nose was almost touching the page because they wanted to almost dive in the books. Mm -hmm. And they were each picking characters and changing their voice and really having a blast. Um, the reading guides offer some reflective questions. So what I noticed in the classroom is that this is also um, what I'm bringing was unintentional, but social emotional learning. Okay. They, they, they're, they're pairing up, they're reading in pairs, sometimes trios. They're working on their reading guides and they're collaborating on their reading guides saying, um, you know, what was Granny Eve thinking on this page as a question? And they'll discuss that. They'll wait for each other until the next until the person's done to flip the page so that they can continue reading as their character. So there's kindness, there's generosity. Um, they laugh with each other. There's jokes in the comic books. So they're laughing with each other. And then there's days where we play. We play periodic table twister. Um, so there's kinesthetic learning. Um, we play bingo where there's uh, where they have to do a little bit of addition and subtraction in their heads. Um, that's, it's number line math, basically. It's not very sophisticated math. It's uh, second grade math. Okay. Um, so there's a, a lot to be said for it. Um, the materials that are needed are all print. Um, I trying to reduce screen time for our kids. So the comic books are only available as a paper version right now. 
Um, and the all the other materials that I talked about are free for teachers. Okay. So I'm also trying to make sure that everything's accessible. So the the workbooks, the activities, the games, the teacher's guide, those are all free. Um, so I would really, really just hope that if, if a teacher's out there and would like to try, um, that's really all I'm asking is, is if you try, you'll be successful. Uh, just listening to you, I teach right now, I teach adult chemistry. So uh, it's something <laughs> that I think I can use uh, for my <laughs> students. Uh, my students, um, if, you know, at the school that I teach, uh, my students have been out of school for a while. So they're coming back to school. So uh, I think they could benefit. So uh, looking forward, somehow, I'll talk to my boss and see the possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they will be able to, I don't see why they cannot uh, uh, to invest in something like uh, something like this. Uh, so right now, currently this uh, comic book, it's more ideal for students from five, grade five to 10, correct? If I'm not mistaken. Um, I know that's a tough question for me. I'm seeing grade four, it being very successful. Okay. And I would say grade four through um, grade 104, because okay. we all missed out on chemistry, right? Yes, we do. So, <laughs> and and, and beca just because it's it, the characters are animated, um, it doesn't mean the concepts are lessened. Um, so I, what I, what I don't want is because I can start at, at age nine, eight or nine, it doesn't mean it's prohibitive of adults. I mean, if you think of all the great movies like Finding Nemo yeah. um, or things like that. So a, a mark of great steam is intergenerational. And that's also a, a mark of great learning. I like so that. I would say that my comic books are intergenerational beca just because of the fact that so few of us understand chemistry at a deep enough level. And that this will allow anybody. There's some jokes in there that are made um, for a, an adult audience only based on time. Like um, some of the this, the kids might be too young to understand what life was like before a cell phone, but certainly the adults reading it will understand what life was like before a cell phone. So there's some references that are multi generational as well. And in the first episode, they travel back in time to 19. 21 Orange, New Jersey to save the radium girls. So there's a historical aspect that brings in what does it mean to be safe at work? What, you know, and this was the first case where um, workers um, were given the right to sue an employer for unsafe conditions. So there's a lot in their IO. So I really have a difficult time putting an age on it. So on my website, it says eight to 108. And I really believe that. Okay. Uh, so if I may share another video. Uh, this sure. Is, yeah. Let me share another video. So can you see my, uh, my screen? I can. Yes. So, yeah. Which one would you like me to share? <laughs> uh, which one will be the best one at this point, especially taking us back? Um, the that one, the one with me in it. Okay. Uh, the comic book chemistry. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that so much. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully someday when I can afford it, I can <laughs> find something that doesn't have commercials. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> themselves. 
the first characters were Poppy and Ray. Poppy for Poloni on the gray for radium. Ray has this saying all through the comic books like zero is our hero and that's fixed when they know zero is our hero so if cadmium is plus two and oxygen is minus two you can put those together and you get zero one of my favorite scenes is where big ox and red and rusty now are roadies for the heavy metals and big ox is starstruck by cobalt and they bump into each other and cobalt asks big ox to play a duet and he's like well He's a little scary. He's like, just so you know, I don't play well on an empty stomach. <laughs> and Cobalt looks like, don't worry, man, I got you. And lifts up his hat and throws him two electrons. And that, that electron transfer is what really happens in the ionic compound Cobalt Oxide. Big Ox eats him. He's like, somebody give me some sunglasses. <laughs> Let's rock. Oh, wow. wow. So when I first started writing these stories, the drawings were very crude. I drew like boxes for them, stick figures, until I realized that I really needed help with the art. <laughs> and in walks Mac at that point. Hey Mac, oh my gosh. I first met Mackenzie Reagan when she was 13 and she goes by Mac and she was a budding artist. And while she was in my class, we were working on some of these stories at the time, they weren't comic books yet. And I asked Mac if she could help me draw some of these a lot better than my box square figures. All right, are you ready to, to make some characters? I'm so ready. Okay, so I'm gonna surprise you, all right? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna make water. Water, it's <laughs> so When I first think about developing a character, especially if it's a character that's a molecule like water, the first thing that I do is I draw it. And it, there's something called a Lewis structure where I would have oxygen in the middle and then two bonds, which are lines, and then two hydrogens flanking it. And in that description, oh. then I would go through that with Mac and say, what do you see? So think about how we can connect this design to the field. So I'm seeing like flippers on the H's maybe. Yeah. Oh, very good. And yeah. we have, they have huge eyeballs. Oh, that's so good. Massive eyeballs. So there we go. That's our water molecule. Little a little rough sketch of the water molecule. <laughs> <laughs> so once I had the comics developed in script format, I realized that I need to test them on kids. It was during the pandemic, so I did schedule over Zoom, but there was a, a definite bonus to that because I could record those. And like I actually learned in more detail about like in comics and that kind of stuff. How did that actually happen? Did that happen? Oh, such a good question, Andy. So what I was looking for in these kids is their ability to speak chemistry. Because chemistry is a language. Yes. And I could hear them be very fluent. And then after the parentheses, it's a four. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I really realized the magic that was happening when I was getting fourth graders doing college level chemistry. Awesome, you guys. Maybe Poppy, would you do the honor of sharing electrons with me? Now that we're all vaccinated, I was able to work in person with Olivia Permain Grant. I've known Olivia since she's been born, so I'm friends with her mom. And she saw the comic books because I brought them over to the house and she's kind of looking at them. And I thought, well, third grade's a little young, but let's see. And her mom, Stephanie, called me and said, Olivia wants to know more. Right, and the two means the copper has a two plus strong. So I came up there with some props. I brought a big shower curtain that's a periodic table, and we laid it out on the ground, and I said, Olivia, let's play Twister. What? What is that? How do you see? Wow. Wow. For the students who are reading these comics to recognize that not one comic book is set in a laboratory <laughs> and that science transcends the laboratory. Chemistry is everywhere and that really is the message. And I want them to realize that the chemistry starts here in your brain with your imagination. Should we give a messy swimmer bun? Yeah. 
to all those swimmers out there. Yeah, <laughs> in water. Love water. <laughs> I really think this project is about raising the bar and learning, but also lowering the bar to accessibility. Oh, so that right. students and anybody in the entire world can learn chemistry through this platform. This is my life's work, and I know that. And I can keep going until chemistry becomes normal, because this is what I'm, I'm meant to do. I love it. Oh, my God. That is a powerful, powerful video. Thank you. That was a powerful video. I love that last statement, you know, um, raising the bar for learning, but at the same time, lowering it so that everyone can learn. I mean, especially in these days that when we, in these days, you know, we're talking about equity, right? Right. right. And inclusion. What is the best way of making it? Uh, making it happen, making learning happen. This is the way. I mean, what do you what do you say? What do you think? Do you agree? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I and again, I'm I'm pretty passionate about keeping it accessible. Um, the comic books will be bound in sets so that libraries can have them. So I can imagine that any student can go to a public library or child and um, have access to reading it for free. So. I'm trying to make these accessible all over the world for that reason. We also are translating it as we speak into Spanish. So we'll have a, a Spanish version as well. Um, I am from Southern Arizona and we have a very um, rich and luxurious and full Spanish community, Spanish speaking community here. So um, that's part of my mission as well. This is a really powerful video. Um, I, I, I will admit, um, so very powerful uh, indeed. Um, one of the things that I also like in that video, it's it's uh, your collaboration with uh, the young lady called Mac. Is it Mac? If I'm right, not... yeah, Mackenzie, but she goes by Mac. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh my, that that is also powerful because in one of the articles that I have written is um, I premise that at least that was what I was trying to do. Premise these that article with this idea that the Gen Z and um, Gen X are creating content. So if they are creating content and they're loading it onto the social media, TikTok mm -hmm. especially, I think it behooves us teachers, whenever we design uh, our lesson plan, or uh, during you know uh, the beginning of the school year when we go to our professional de development to design a lesson plan, it will be great to include the students in that design too. And when I see what you were doing, including Mac, right, <laughs> designing, right. oh my God, it's like. This is exactly the point. <laughs> I mean, what do you say? What do you, you, you don't know what you have done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank kidding. you. I mean, Mac was a student in my class for two years. She took a regular chemistry and organic chemistry with me. And now she's a senior at Savannah College of Art and Design. So we've been working on this for, well, her entire college career. So before she left for college, she started on it with me. And now she's a senior. She's also a friend of my son's. So it's super fun for me because they've been friends forever. That's how I've known her for so long. Um, but she was just my natural choice. I said, I need an artist. And I knew Mac was going to Savannah College of Art and Design. I've seen her work and I know she's going places. She's very talented. So it's an honor that she would consider um, collaborating with me on this project because, you know, Mac's got a lot of other <laughs> art dreams and visions of her own. So uh, I'm very, very humbled to have Mac as my concept artist on this program. I'm glad that you're doing that. Also, in addition, uh, I think it would be great for, you know, based on your work to emphasize moving forward, the importance of collaboration also between uh, different disciplines, most especially right. the arts and, and the science and the engineering. Uh, it's so critical 
that it's not even a joke. We often talk about the integration of science and engineering, uh, and most especially because of the next generation science standards that actually yeah. emphasizes that. I think that one other thing that needs to be emphasized is the integration of arts. Because yeah, you, agree. yeah, I mean, you are a working, you, your concept works uh, literally. Here it is. Uh, it's a video. We see it. And it is demonstrative, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, and I think that this is, I think there's, there's a time for the policymakers, in my view, uh, need to sort of uh, find a way whereby they really put the money where, uh, <laughs> the, where the best practices are. Uh, your work is the best practice. And um, how do you how easy do you think this could be implemented uh, in physics or in the other physical sciences, uh, in physics most especially and mathematics? How easy could this? Because I think that your model, um, it's something that can be applicable in physics and and mathematics. I think you've touched upon it previously. Do you want to? Yeah, allow I, I yeah, I think it it's, it could be and should be. Um, I think one of the reasons that, um, and I remember this when my son was younger, and he's 22 now, so we're a little past all this, but uh, when he was younger, his struggles in, in mathematics, um, when I, I'm, I'm a natural storyteller, so I would tell him stories about algebra or anything that's abstract, mm. I think benefits from storytelling. So mm. algebra is another section of mathematics that, um, benefits once you start introducing a symbol to represent something and then we call it a variable that notion of something that can change or or can you know increase or decrease or represent an, another subsection uh, needs a story associated with it so my methodology really lends itself to abstract concepts in education that is really, uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, so my hope is uh, many teachers, many uh, policymakers in education and parents will see this video and and they will see your work and uh, they will buy your book and they will buy your work because I see it as really critical as a way of changing the learning and, and the teaching. Uh, we can't continue really to continue to do the same thing and expect yeah. a different result. Uh, it's not happening. Um, if our interest is to really, um, you know, increase the performance of our students and also make it more inclusive, and that is one of the great thing about you know your work. It's it's making it inclusive, and and I like that. Um, I think we need to sort of, we need to, you know, uh, everybody needs to be inviting you to uh, to professional development before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Literally, I'm not kidding. I would love that. I mean, yeah. it's my passion. I love helping teachers get started. Um, I think another comment I want to make about mm -hmm. inclusivity, we talked about accessibility and, and yes. we know that the comic books in the platform is very accessible. It's written at, in a way that's accessible. It's presented in a way. The characters are modeled after the molecules they represent. And you saw that with, with Mac drawing the water molecule as a seal with yeah. the head kind of being the oxygen and the fins being the flanking hydrogens. So with that, my characters, um, most of them don't have a gender. Most of them don't have an ethnicity. Most of them don't have a race because they literally are just objects. They're, they're, they're objects instead of characters. And so I think in today's day, uh, where everyone's been incredibly thoughtful about representation, we really don't see um, a human-like form. And I, I do that on purpose um, to kind of keep that out of it because I want them to learn about something that's abstract. So my character should be abstract. Yeah. Um, with the exception of Ray, you saw a little snippet of my son in the in the video um ray looks like my son my son has big puffy hair like ray so <laughs> I, I i was able to do that so ray looks like my son but um other than that uh the other characters are non-human um and you know they just they look like molecules so i think from the standpoint of inclusivity they're objects 
And I think they're they're because they're invisible objects or molecules, students and parents will all be able to connect with them. I totally, totally agree with you, uh, Dr. Kelly, uh, Colleen. Now you asked me to call you Kelly. Yeah, Colleen. Uh, yeah. Colleen. <laughs> um, I totally agree with you. And uh, I just want to say I am honored that you uh, you came on to In Touch, Think Korea, uh, In Touch, uh, uh, <laughs> In Touch, Think Korea, um, I think STEAM Korea podcast. Uh, to do really discuss uh, your book, uh, the creative ways in which you are making chemistry, uh, you know, much easier to learn, not only for young people, but even adults. And I, I, I see a lot of benefit to what you are doing and what you have created. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for coming on and uh, talking to me and to us, to all of the country. And uh, everyone, go out there, uh, <laughs> buy the book, uh, school administrators, district, uh, invite Dr. Kelly, you know, for professional development. I just want to put, uh, you know, put out, you know, the, the pitch out there for you. I, I really Thank feel you. this is the way uh, it needs to go. Um, uh, is there any last thing that you want to say uh, before I end the show? Uh, any Anything that you want to say, final? No, I just appreciate the opportunity and the support. And uh, like you said, I, I'm I'm here to help people. So um, if you have questions, just ask me. I'm I'm here. Okay. And uh, if they want to reach you, is uh, uh, your website? Do you want to share it? And you can give it to me later on too, and I will make sure uh, I put in you know your contact information and the bio sure yeah yeah it's just um kids chemical solution.com okay so uh, kids chemical solutions.com yep ex excellent i forgot to ask you this question uh, are we to expect uh other comic books in in physics and mathematics as time goes on from you that would be really as good. time goes <laughs> on um right now the comic books um so that's a great comment so i should let the audience know it's a 10 comic book series that has um, been scaffolded against the learning objectives found in a freshman chemistry textbook. So chapters one through 10 are mirrored in comic books one through 10. Uh, we, uh, by actually I just saw the proofs for comic books three and four. So they'll be out um, in the next couple of weeks um, for publication. And then um, we're working on the, the remaining six from the series. So it might take a while. The, um, I'm very grateful. My comic book artist is, um, Mac is my concept artist. I have another comic book artist. And as you can imagine, um, he's taxed with learning chemistry as he's creating comic books. So <laughs> it's, a, it's it's been a great collaboration. So my comic book artist has to learn a little bit of chemistry along the way. So we're we're moving about as fast as we can. But I, I don't imagine the physics and math coming out until we finish the chemistry series first. That's our first priority. Thank you so much for sharing that information. Thank you, Dr. Kel Ke Kelly, for coming on to this podcast uh, to discuss your life's work. I uh, truly enjoy it. Uh, uh, folks, uh, just would like to state that uh, this podcast explore the evolving world of science, technology, engineering and arts, and mathematics and underrepresented community, including Blacks, Indigenous, and people of color. As we all know, STEAM, and as, sh as we shall know, STEAM is vital to our community because our community's health economy and future depends on our solid foundation and participation in innova innovation taking place in the STEAM field. With the surge in the emphasis in preparing K-12 students for STEAM workforce, initiatives such as Dr. Kelly uh, in exposing teachers and students uh, to the application of arts in the STEM field, it's critical, it's vital. Okay? So this is the type of strategy that we need to literally uh, implement within our school system. This way, 10 years from now, 
uh, we can reap the positive rewards. Uh, we can increase this number because this number is really low. Thank you once more again, Dr. Kelly. And uh, thank you. Uh, we're talking to you soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.